I am the DX Lab Leader here at the State Library of New South Wales. And the DX Lab is the library's innovation hub. We look at um, researching and developing new ways to get access to our collection through using kind of emerging and existing technologies. DX Lab came about from a large funding grant that was given to the library to digitise our collections. That's a sort of um, a big program of work uh, producing uh, an amazing amount, millions and millions of files of digitised content from our collection that we then make accessible for people online. The DX Lab emerged four years ago and that's really to kind of look at the ways in which um, you can use all that material because um, the people need to know that that material is there and that it's, it's their material and that they can use it in any way they like. But what we're trying to do is create new innovative ways for people to actually get access to this content. So we're a small team, we work with that material and we create exhibitions, we create um, experiences online, we do events uh, that kind of push the boundaries in design thinking and um, really try to inspire others to use that content because it's really, it's, it's the people's content. It's really interesting now that um, technology has allowed us to produce masses and masses of content and I think um, you know, all of that just ends up going on servers and um, it, it just, it's, it's like a petri dish growing, you know, it's, 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 this content is doubling and tripling every single day. And what is really exciting is that now, you know, what you can do in the web in a browser or even using that technology in the gallery space has come a really long way in a few years. So you've got this convergence happening of, you know, masses amounts of data, but also technology becoming a lot more accessible and um, usable in kind of either budget restricted ways or um, space restricted ways so that you can really kind of make these large data sets way more accessible than you could even five years ago. So Field of View came through um, a creative technologist, Mike Daly, who approached us with an idea. Uh, we were familiar with Mike's film work that he was doing and he, he gave us this proposal which we loved. And it was to work with our photographic collections using um, LiDAR scans and to build an, an immersive experience. It, was, it wasn't quite fully worked out at that point and it was focusing on different material like material from Martin Place. But in the course of this program what happens is they're quite fluid and the design process is actually worked out through being here and working with the technologists here, the curators here, the knowledge holders and so it really shapes this program of work for the creative. And that's what happened with Field of View because in the process of um, looking at the collection, organising potentially LiDAR scans of Martin Place, it turned out that we, uh, the library actually had um, point cloud data scans of the Mitchell Reading Room for the restoration work that we were doing for the Mitchell Galleries project. So that was a nice kind of find that we didn't really necessarily know we had. So then the facilities team handed all that um, point cloud data over to us so that we could share that with our creative technologist Mike. So Mike took that material and started to put it into um, the Unreal Gaming Engine. Most of what we do is about creating new experiences with the collection and the data. We were talking to the curators about what material we could use to augment the field of view VR experience. And they came up with these beautiful photographs from the 30s um, of 
um, photographs that were taken in situ in the library from the exact location. So Mike was then able to place those um, photographs in the actual spot so that when you have the um, headset on, you can teleport yourself around the Mitchell reading room, inside, outside, slice view, um, underneath the behind the scenes, you know, the back of house areas, and really get a sense of what the library is like from that sort of bird's eye perspective and also places that you can't go. In the circulation gallery, we have a very large uh, projection space with a touch screen. It's a really important space because it's an entry into the gallery space, so you get you kind of get immersed as soon as you walk into this um, uh, hallway circulation gallery. And so seeing Mike's work up on this very large projection space um, was very very immersive, even though it's it's you know a flat screen, um, but it's projection and it's not VR. But it worked. He slowed it down. And it, it was um, at such a scale that you felt immersed in this work. So that was um, on display for almost a year. And now what we're trying to do, we've um, found some funding to turn the, um, take it from Unreal and put it into Google Daydream um, for our learning services team. So they have school groups coming through um, every week and we have a state-of-the-art learning centre that's got, you know, daydream headsets, pixel phones. So what we've looked at is the opportunity of taking um, some research, some technology, blurring them together to create an ongoing um, experience that will be available for a much broader audience now. It's such a different way to experience the collection rather than looking at a web browser, you know, on your desktop, on your tablet, on your phone. I mean, unless we have an exhibition with those prints up on display, um, A, can people find this content? Do they know we have it? And then at what scale are they immersing this, themselves in it? So to have um, a beautiful creative work developed in VR, in an immersive gallery space, through large-scale projection. Um, the process of immersion does something to the work that makes people notice different things about that particular work. You know, the detail, um, just putting, putting those uh, pictures in context as well. You know, it, it is a very different experience to looking at it when you get a search return and you get a tiny thumbnail. There is a beauty at seeing these works through immersion that, um, you know, may spark new knowledge in research. It may spark new connections just within the time at which these photographs were taken. They may even spark connections that people may know these people. So we've had examples where people have actually stumbled upon, you know, people they know within the collection. So that really is a powerful way to um, draw people into those collections.